everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. We are filming on the floor again. Uh, <laughs> so this is the third video, the second you've seen, I think, where I'm filming on the floor. But there is a real mess of stuff behind you and I haven't sorted it yet. So on the floor it is. So today I'm filming my February reading wrap up. I read nine books in February, which is fantastic for me. I read more, I read 11 in January, but there were three novellas in there. And in this stack that I have in front of me, only one of them is a short book. So I feel really, really happy with my reading for this month. So I did think that I would do some stats. It's been something I've been meaning to do for a while, but I didn't have it sorted for my December and January joint reading wrap up. But I have now sorted stuff out. I am using the Corpal spreadsheet from G Books Roast. Yeah, Books Roast. Um, but I am not doing the Corpal rating. So just to clarify that, because to be honest, I, no matter how many times I watch G's video, the Corpal rating, I can't figure out how to rate the books using that method. But G's spreadsheet is fantastic. So I'm using the spreadsheet so that I can track kind of a little bit more easily. Uh, and I can give you some proper stats in my videos. And I can talk to you about pages read and all that kind of thing. I think that's included on here. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the kind of thing that I want to be able to to tell you about. So first up for the pages read this month, I read 3,013 pages. This is slightly less than in January. How? These books are bigger. I guess just the nature of having two more books in there. I'm quite surprised by that. <laughs> um, but yeah, apparently I read more pages. One of the things that I forgot to mention in my January video is, and because ultimately I haven't done it yet, but I am planning to donate to a different charity each month based on the pages I've read. So I was inspired to do this by JD Raid Reads, who does a polathon, readathon uh, twice a year. And she, in the last one, she donated one pound for every 100 pages read to polathon. And I really like that idea. It really motivated me to read. So I'm going to be picking a different charity each month and doing a donation. So based on these, it'll be about, it'll be like 32 uh, pounds for January and 30 pounds for February that I'll be donating. I still need to figure out which charities those are going to be. Um, I'm pretty sure one will be mined, but I do just need to like still look into that. I could talk to you about the hours listened to. I listened to a couple of my books on audio, but to be honest, I'm not doing a great job of marking the number of hours. Also, I list on like sped up speed so I don't think that's actually reflective of the number of hours so I'm not going to include that but one of the books was an audiobook and all the rest were physical this month I am listening to another audio oh one was hybrid actually one was hybrid audio and physical so I should update that um and then to give you just an update because this tracks how many series you've like started and you've continued through and that kind of thing I've started nine series this year I have read four sequels and I finished one series, so that's embarrassing. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the other stats are all combining January and February so I'm gonna try and set this spreadsheet up later to be a bit clearer between separating January and February well all the months so that I can give better stats but hopefully that was interesting to hear a little bit about my stats for the month but otherwise let me talk to you about each of the books and what I thought so first up I have a middle grade which I read in one day and that is Front Desk by Kelly Yang this is a recommendation from Gavin at How to Train Your Gavin and it's one a middle grade that he really loves and and I can see why. So we follow Mia, who is living with her family in kind of very poor accommodation in LA. And her family end up being given the opportunity to buy and run a motel by a kind of really sleazy, not very nice guy. But they think that it's going to be their key to loving life in America. And so they decide to do it. And this is basically the story of Mia helping them to run the motel. There's various challenges that come with that. They hide immigrants, they deal with bullying, they deal with racism. It's a really difficult read <laughs> for a middle grade. I was not expecting it to be as heartbreaking as it was at many times. Mia is also a super interesting character because she is not always likable. She makes quite a lot of mistakes. She's quite brash. She's quite uh, fiery. Uh, but she does, as you go through the story, own it a lot more, which is really great character development to see. It's really good. It's really well written. It's very interesting. There are quite a few books in the series. I'm definitely going to pick up the second one. I might even read it in March if I get my hands on it because I think that it's well worth following this story. 
I gave it four stars. It just wasn't quite it didn't quite reach that like higher tier for me but i'm really interested i have no idea where the story will go from here this story is based on the author kelly yang's real life and so i'm interested to see like i know that the other ones i, I mean the blurbs for these make them sound a lot more light touch <laughs> than they actually are uh but i'm really interested to see where the other ones go because i feel like this one wraps up the story in quite a nice way so it's really interesting to see what more we can gain from spending time with these characters I think that this would be a sometimes difficult but very necessary read for the actual age group that it's aimed for. I'd really recommend it for middle graders because I think that it deals with some really challenging topics but in a way that is quite accessible if hard to read. So I would really recommend this one. Next up we have a book that I was disappointed not to love more than I did. That is Written in the Stars by Alexandria Belfleur. So I read this one because our I, I'm in a group chat with some friends from uh, in a discord and this was the book club read for January or one of the book club reads and I didn't get to it in January because I wasn't very well so I ended up reading the rest in February. Maybe it wasn't the right time for me to push through with it but I just this has such good reviews and I just didn't like it as much as other people which was so sad because this is one of my favourite book covers. I've been so excited to read this since I picked it up at Yauk but yeah, sad times. So in this story, we follow Elle and Darcy and Elle has just um, joined forces with a guy called Brendan to bring some astrology to his dating app. And she is really interested in finding a partner, as is Brendan. And so he sets her up with his sister, Darcy. They go on a date. It goes really terribly. They both have an awful time. They don't think they're ever going to see each other again. And then Darcy accidentally kind of tells Brendan that it went really well with Elle and she decides to convince Elle to fake date her. I should have loved this. It's fake dating. There's like just no reason I shouldn't have enjoyed this but for whatever reason I just didn't. I didn't quite vibe with the characters or the writing or something like that. I think like a lot of people love this and so if you think that you would love a fake dating trope sapphic romance like absolutely pick this up. Um, I don't understand why those two things didn't work for me. <laughs> But there we are. So I do have the second one for this. And if you've watched my um, March TBR, you'll see that it is on there because I am really interested in seeing what happens with Brendan's story. And also I already own the third one. So it kind of makes sense to carry on with the story um, because I already own the third one. And even if that then ends up being I unhold the whole thing, at least it would be another series off my TBR. So I finished Written in the Stars while I was away for work and I needed another book to get me through the train journey on the following day. So I went to the Waterstones in Colchester and I was like, okay, what book am I going to pick up? I'm, it was a complete cover buy, which uh, does not often work for me even though but I really am someone that buys based on the cover and this is one of my favorite covers I think is so stunning but I maybe need to stop doing that but this is The Dating Plan by Sara Desai or Desi and this is the second in a series I haven't read the first one I'm gonna guess that the main character in this Daisy her best friend was the focus of the first one because she is mentioned a lot if she wasn't the focus of the first one um but I don't think it hinders your reading experience because it effectively spoils what happens in the first one anyway so I don't really think I lost too much out by having not read the first one but this is the story of Daisy what is the guy's name Liam so Daisy is at a work conference and she runs into an ex-boyfriend there's also one of her aunts there who's trying to set her up with this handsome doctor or something like that and she runs into Liam who was her best friend until he left like randomly when Daisy was 18 and she's never really got over it. She hasn't seen him for 10 years, but she was in love with him and she's never forgiven him. She hasn't seen him in all that time and she just happens to run into him at this conference. And to save face to her ex-boyfriend and her aunties, Liam pretends to be her boyfriend. You see where we're going? It's very much my thing, fake dating. And so, you know, and Daisy goes along with it, thinking that it will just be like a one-time thing. And then Liam's granddad dies and Liam's uh his granddad runs a distillery and in order to give him the distillery this this one you really have to like suspend your, your belief for but in order to give him the distillery in his inheritance Liam has to be married by his next birthday and stay married to that person for an entire year and 
once you get past that, it's then basically Daisy and Liam rediscovering their feelings for each other from 10 years ago. So it's both second chance romance and fate dating. And yeah, it, this was a good time. I enjoyed it more than Written in the Stars. I don't know if I rated it three or three and a half stars. I rated Written in the Stars three stars, just realised I didn't say. I didn't say. Um, but yeah, it like it was a good time. The uh the steamy scenes are well written in fact the whole book was well written daisy is a really interesting character because she is constantly described as like very unique and you know sort of thinks maybe a bit differently to other people and the way that it's presented i actually think is done really well daisy is very likable as a character liam is mostly likable though he is definitely a, a bit brash at times and he kind of has like this really fiery attitude that's very much like I'm gonna deck him I'm gonna kill him and we don't ever get the like repercussion of like how about we don't do that like we don't get Daisy being like calm down and that's that's one of the things I don't like about it uh but I do like the like mash of cultures Liam is Irish you've got this this mash of cultures of like Indian and Irish culture coming together and that's very interesting um so yeah it's like I think a lot of people again I think a lot of people would get a lot out of this book I'm really glad I read it I'm not really sure if I'm going to carry on the C series or not I don't think I would prioritize it but definitely if someone stuck a book by Sara Desi in front of me I would totally read it really really well written book and I mean look at this cover and all the covers are beautiful because the, the other two are out already uh, well obviously the first one's out because this is the second one but they are beautiful absolutely beautiful colors I love love the color of this purple so if you watched any of my 2022 videos, you'll know that I do love a YA romance. <laughs> um, despite being 30, I just, I loved that kind of book when I was younger. And I don't know, I have a lot of nostalgia. I still watch a lot of that type of TV and things like that. Clearly, I have never grown up. But anyway, so I picked up Well, That Was Unexpected by Jesse Cusanto, uh, completely on a whim. It was an absolute cover buy, but look at it. L look at that shade of pink. Look at that bl blue. Like, this cover is gorgeous. And so, yeah, I read the blurb. I mean, it's got, it's quoted by Ali Hazelwood on the front. I read the blurb and I was like, cool, I'm all good. I'll definitely read this. The blurb uh, is a little bit of a missell for what I think this book actually is. But again, it's a fake dating. I read the three fake datings in a row. Okay, that's the, yeah, okay. It is my favourite trope, <laughs> but still. So we have um, Charlotte and George Clooney. And Charlotte, is, Charlotte has a really difficult relationship with her mum. And, you know, they're quite fiery and she you know they've really struggled for a long time and she decides that she's going to sleep with her boyfriend and just when they're about to do that she decides she can't uh and I really like how that scene is written because the guy takes it really well her boyfriend who's lovely so her mum walks in on them <laughs> and particularly given they don't have a good relationship they've not spoken about it really doesn't take it well and decides that they need to go and spend the summer in Indonesia, which is where her mum is from. Charlotte has always wanted to know more about her mum's life in Indonesia, but her mum doesn't speak about it. So there is part of her that's intrigued to go, but the other part of her obviously doesn't want to be uprooted from summer with her friends. And while she's over there, her mum goes on like an Indonesian dating app and starts chatting to George Clooney, uh, who is like he's not like a prince but he's like a very very wealthy person in Indonesia so kind of like a financial equivalent and she obviously wants to find someone who she thinks is going to be like really you know a stand-up guy I guess and what she doesn't know is that George Clooney's dad and sister are the ones who are actually on the other end on this dating app because they think that he's um very like sad and alone uh they catch him doing something where they think right you need a girlfriend so th this book is much more um overtly sexual than i anticipated but anyway so uh they set them up on a date and they both realize they've been catfished by their parents uh but ultimately they get caught on press so they decide that they are going to fake date to kind of uh help the the image of both of them but predominantly george clooney they develop feelings for each other. There's sort of various complicated parts to this around the fact that George Clooney comes from a lot of money. Also, Charlotte is dealing with a lot of learning about her mum. There's a secret that her mum has about why she'd never returned to Indonesia. So we discovered that as part of the story. Um, yeah, so I think that this is like for the intended audience it's for. Now, I... I, you may question at this point, why do you read things that aren't for the audience you are? But like Heartstopper is not meant for me and it's my favourite book of all time, you know? 
I really can love some of these books as one of my favourites. I think this one in particular was not meant for an adult to love it. I think if you are of the age, you are much more likely to enjoy this book than I did. I also think, and this is actually something that happens in a lot of YA, is that the author, who will often be a similar age to me or older, will write about things that link to them. So like, the f I kind of realised as I was reading this, I was like, does a person aged 14 to 18 actually know who George Clooney is? I don't know. And there's a lot of references to things like that. There's a lot of reference to Instagram, when really it would be TikTok. And it's like things like that, where I think that, it it dates the author like I deal with young people a lot as part of my job and I think I, I sometimes get called out for being like old about things and I think that there are elements of this book that read a little bit like that um I also think that there is probably more it should do around the addressing of sexuality and how you know young people of this age deal with that there's probably a little bit more of that that needs to be addressed but it's an interesting read I wouldn't read it again but I think that there are people of this age who would definitely get a lot out of it next I listened to an audiobook and uh just to be like really basic as a booktuber I listened to Spare which is the biography by Prince Harry I listened to this through January as well it's long <laughs> it's long um <laughs> it is so basic, I mean, it's the biography of Prince Harry's life, right? That That is, it, there's not really much to say about it, but it's effectively in three parts. It's in part one, which is Princess Diana, Prince part two, which is the army, and part three, which is Meghan. I really enjoyed, if you can say that, because to be honest, Harry's life has been very tragic. So it's in similar to I'm Glad My Mom Died, it's really difficult to say I did or didn't enjoy this, but I gained a lot from listening to part one and part three. Part two, I'm going to be honest, it was just a slog. This book is so long. I mean, I'm glad I listened to it on audio and, you know, it's nice to listen to Prince Harry. Um, you know, he's got that kind of voice. But ultimately, I did have to speed it up a lot to get through it because I just thought this is taking me so long to listen to. And the middle the middle section, if you are not interested in the army, you're going to find part two like it's it just is it's long <laughs> it's basically once he's like at Eton from there on until he meets Megan that it's just a lot um this book is very honest and that is in many ways a, pr a, a praising sometimes I think I, I thought could you have filtered this <laughs> um and obviously I do not know <laughs> the royal family and I have no idea what is and isn't true if everything or even part of what Harry says in this book is true, I feel incredibly sorry for the life that he has had to lead. Uh, and I'm inclined to believe a fair amount of it. I it, It's it's very damning on Charles and, and Will. Um, and I, I don't know uh, how he got away with putting that information out there. I cannot imagine that their relationship will ever survive Harry ri having written some of the things he's written about his family but then you can kind of understand when you listen to the part about Meghan how it gets to that point and the amount of racism and hate that is shown towards Meghan uh, is like I mean it's just awful it's horrible to to listen to so you know I'm not really into the royal family which I think actually helps listening to this I think if you side one way or the other a lot with the royal family you would have way more opinions than I did I found it insightful. I liked listening to Harry's story, um, but it's easier, I think, to not have a massive opinion. My Facebook feed is full of people that hate Harry, and that almost makes me more inclined to like it more because I'm of a generation that is not um, in the majority as racist. Uh, but you know, it's from an objective point of view of like writing, the middle section could have done with cutting. But, you know, I think if you have even the slightest bit of interest in the royal family, I would listen to Spare. I think it's worth the time. So 
obviously Spare took me a little while to listen to, so a lot of these books cross over. Oh, also I should say I gave both Well That Was Unexpected and Spare three stars. Um, Spare should maybe have been three and a half, but I was I was very tired from the, <laughs> from the army section. Um, so I was kind of, you know, listening to Spare alongside reading a lot of these. But the next book I read was Set On You by Amy Lee. I really wanted to read this because I really want to read X's and O's, which is the sequel to this. I think that sounds absolutely my kind of book. And but I thought I should read Set On You first because it's the first in a series. I do think like I know a lot of romances are not necessarily that linked in a series but I do actually think you need to read Set On You first. I mean I haven't read X's and O's yet but there's a lot of setup about Tara who is the main character in X's and O's in this story so I would recommend reading this one first. So in this story we have Crystal who is a curvy fitness influencer and one day she's at work and she's also a personal trainer and uh, this new guy comes in, steals her squat rack. They get into like really heated kind of uh you know typical like enemies to lovers um stealing each other's equipment and things like that she corners him one day in the men's changing rooms they kiss best kiss of her life she is so embarrassed she like runs away from him doesn't think she'll ever see him again she's avoiding him at the gym until she meets him at her grandma's um new like she's basically her grandma's getting married again and they're having like a meet the family dinner and she at that realizes that scott is the grandson of the man that her grandma is marrying so their families are going to be linked because their grandparents are getting married so they end up spending a lot more time together and re realizing their feelings for each other basically and I was expecting to not like this because I watch Hayley and Bookland's videos and she really hated this. And she's someone that goes to the gym a lot and I think she just felt like this wasn't how people would behave. I enjoyed this a lot more than I expected. It was very well written. I think that, I mean, when I say very well written, I feel like my standards are quite low in that there are so many books that go to print with like basic copywriting errors and it really upsets me. <laughs> There was none of that. Um, but generally, I think the characters are really interesting. You get a lot of backstory for the characters. There's interesting plot dynamics. We get a pointless third act drama, it, as we do in all romances. So that's, you know, I didn't give it a five star for that reason. But I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. And all the characters were likeable. Scott is so lovable. You know, everyone wants a Scott, I think. Um, they, and a lot of it is about them just being with each other and figuring out that what they both need in a relationship is someone you can just like hang out on the couch with. And I really like that this promotes that level of non-toxic relationship because honestly, so many romances, particularly enemies to lovers, are promoting toxic relationships. This isn't. Scott's lovely. Um, so yeah, I really like that element. I actually, Crystal is more unlikable and that was also partly why I didn't rate this higher because I just couldn't totally get on board with Crystal. But Scott is so likeable. And I'm really interested to read the second one because Tara is featured a lot in this book. And I just, I think I'm really going to get on with her. I, there is a trigger warning at the beginning of this book, which is around the fact that it's talking about curvy fitness. One thing I didn't realise going into this is it's actually a lot about that. The, the drama that happens in the second half of the book is linked to directly to do with Crystal's size. And as someone who is curvy, I don't actually particularly like reading books that are about the internet hating curvy people. And I understand why it has to happen. Like I, I understand it's a thing, right? I get it. I'm on the, uh, not on the scale, but I'm on the internet as a curvy person. And I understand that, you know, there's, there are unfortunately a lot of like really nasty people in the world. I very much understand that. But I don't actually want all my books about curvy people to be about the hardships of being curvy. I like it when books just have curvy characters and we move on. It's not, it doesn't need to be the whole plot. So I wasn't anticipating this book to be that much about that. So if you are someone who is triggered by uh, how people speak about curvy people on the internet, I don't think this book is for you because it really is a big part of the plot. It's so much more than I expected it would be. So that's just something to bear in mind when you go into this. 
I also would have liked a bit more of the relationship between Crystal and Scott to happen on the page. A lot of it happens like off screen. And I felt like because of that, the pacing, you're like, when did we go to love? We went to love off page. I, I missed you falling in love with each other. And so that was like another slight downside for me. But as I say, otherwise, I really enjoyed this. And I'm really interested to read the second one, which I will hopefully read in March. So in the main, this month was like a pretty three and four star read. Um, I don't think I've had any five star reads so far this year, which is very sad, but I think I have really high standards for five stars. I think I'm that kind of rater. But this one came pretty darn close. So on a complete whim, I picked up this manga in Waterstones and I love it. It is I Think Our Son Is Gay by Akura. And this is my first manga go me uh because you know it's everything on booktube right now but i picked this one up because i just felt that from looking at the cover it would give me heartstopper vibes and to be honest i'm on the constant search for books that remind me or give me the feeling of heartstopper it was just so special to me to read in 2022 and i want more books that make me feel like that and i think this goes some way to doing that so in this book we have tomoko uh, which is the mum, and then Hiroki and Yuri, her two sons. Their dad travels a lot and is away for work, so doesn't really live there, so the mum is, like, raising the kids on her own. And Tomoko is pretty sure that Hiroki is gay, and this book is about Hiroki hiding a lot of that from his mum, and her figuring out how she's going to deal with it and, like, coming to terms with it, and how she's going to tell his dad about it, because Hiroki's dad is a little bit homophobic, and so she's got to figure out how to overcome that, she's got to figure out how she's going to talk to her teenage son about this. It's a really cute story, it's very, well, it's the beginning of a series, so I'm interested to see where it goes. I love the art, there's a lot of really angsty Hiroki in here, um, but I mean, I can just, even if I just show you that, it's so cute, it's, it's black and white, the rest of it, but, um, but it's, I think many aspects of it about Hiroki figuring out his sexuality, a lot of it is about that. Um, the only reason, so I rated this 4.75. The only reason I didn't rate this higher is that at no point does Tomoko, the mum, really address any of it. But I think that's why it's a series. Like I think it's coming in the later books. And I think it's a cultural thing that she actually needs to figure out how she's going to deal with this. She's so supportive of it, which is just adorable to read in her head, like of how much she loves her son and how much she just wants him to be happy. But she doesn't ever speak to him about it. And I feel like a lot of things could have been solved if she did just speak to him about it. But I think that will come in the future ones. It's not very long. So I'm interested to see where this goes. I cannot wait to pick up the sequels for these. They're in my Waterstones basket currently. I just, I can't wait. I really want to see where this story goes. And I do think it gives Heartstopper vibes in that it's relatively cosy, but it's similar in that, like figuring out your sexuality that Nick goes through. Also, Yuri, the little brother. I mean, the 0.75 is for him. He is so sarcastic and he gives side eyes all the time. He's so, I love him. I love him. He's everything a little brother should be. Just, he's pre he's presented like exactly how a little brother would deal with the situation. It's so funny. I love it. So yeah, would really recommend this. Cannot wait to read the second book in the series. Next up, we have a book that I read for a book club at work. Go me. Um, I didn't read the book for our Discord book club this month, but I did read the work one because there's like an in-person meeting that's happening tomorrow when I'm filming this. Um, I'm still a little bit nervous about going because social anxiety be that way, um, but I'm hoping that I will. <laughs> so that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, so which is by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I really wanted to read this one. I haven't read the other books in the book club since I joined it at work because they haven't read things I wanted to read. And I'm not about forcing myself to read something just because of a book club. But when they said that the next book was Seven Husbands, I was like, I, it's on my TBR. It's already there. I need to read it. And I'm so glad I finally got to it. Um, I don't really think you need me to tell you what this is about if you've been on booktube for a second. But if you haven't, this is a story of a, um, a, what, what is she? A writer. <laughs> a writer who gets contacted uh, through her work by Evelyn Hugo's people to say that they would like her to do an exclusive story about Evelyn Hugo. And Evelyn Hugo is a big Hollywood movie star. Kind of think 
Marilyn Monroe, Judy Garland, that type of, of star. And she's retired from acting now, but she's like, you know, in her 80s and everyone still knows all her movies. And, you know, she was the real it girl. And she picks Monique to write the story about her. And it she doesn't tell Monique right away why she's gonna write the story, but Monique is intrigued enough to write it because Evelyn is this huge star. And that she's, Monique is told initially that it's just gonna be an exclusive for Vivant, which is the, the magazine that she works for. But when she meets Evelyn, Evelyn says, it's not just gonna be a magazine. I want you to write a whole book about me, my, my biography. And Monique is really wary at first, but ultimately decides to do it because it's going to sell for millions. It's going to change her life. And so the book is, a lot of it is like the biography. It's Evelyn talking in her own words about her life. But then there is the odd interjection about Monique and about what she learns about Evelyn, but also what she learns about herself and how that influences her own life. And then she realises that her and Evelyn are linked in some way. And so that's the kind of resolution of the story. And I really believed Evelyn was real. Uh, and I know that this is a thing that Taylor Jenkins Reid is able to do. But my goodness, how true is that? That she captures the essence of a person in a way that honestly made me think this person is real. I wanted to know about all the seven husbands and how her life ended up that way. Uh, and the sort of great love of her life and how that's like woven into all of these different marriages that she had how she's linked to Monique, which was not in the way that I had initially expected. Uh, and yeah, it's um, it is fascinating. It's truly fascinating. I gave it four stars that I may be being a little bit harsh in that. It's maybe a four and a half stars. Um, but I think it was just, that's just where it felt for me. But I honestly, I really enjoyed it. It was just, I think towards the end, the story didn't go in the way that I was expecting. And I didn't quite feel that like, five star feeling you know it's a feeling you just know when you know you know so I didn't quite have that but I really enjoyed it I would really recommend it if for any reason you're like like me the last person on booktube that hasn't picked this up I would really recommend it the audiobook for this is outstanding uh, I'm very fussy with audiobooks I don't like really American nasal sounding audiobooks and this is really really good audiobook I started it on audio then I switched to trying to read audio and physical for the first time but I read faster than audiobooks so and when you speed up an audiobook it starts to sound a bit distorted so I decided to switch to reading to get through the book faster because of this meeting at work being tomorrow but yeah it, so for me I've worked out I can't listen to audio and read at the same time so that's useful for me to have learned that but I did read you know I listened to a lot of this on audio and I would really recommend it that way then last up we have the final book that I read which did actually take me about half the month I really was in the kind of mood where I picked up and dropped a lot of books in February but the last book is Like a Charm by Elle McNichol this is a middle grade and again recommended by How to Train Your Gavin so in this story we follow Ramya who's always felt different she has dyspraxia and she's always felt that her family and school have not understood how to support her with that she feels she's just always kind of put in this box of like having special needs and that's kind of it she doesn't get the support she needs she feels like an outcast she doesn't really get on with her parents and the only person she ever really felt she got on with was her granddad. Her granddad, um, they have like a big family fallout when Ramya is quite young. Ramya doesn't really understand why. And then they move to Edinburgh and she finds out her granddad has died. And she goes to the funeral without her parents because they don't get on. And she meets a stranger. And the stranger gives her a business card, invites him to come and meet her and basically says that he is hired to help people get their affairs in order. And he introduces Ramya to the sort of task her granddad left her which is to fill a book of the kind of underworld of Edinburgh and through the course of the story Ramya recognizes that maybe there is more going on uh than it seems maybe she it, you know her dyspraxia can be her superpower uh and that she doesn't really know her family she doesn't understand the true complications that her family are dealing with and yeah, it's it. I I don't I don't want to give too much away because the real joy of this is is learning about it as you go through. So it is a fantasy, and yeah, they just I really enjoyed discovering this story for the first time because it's not one that's really spoken about on BookTube, and so it's what it's one where you don't go in with like preconceived conceptions. You just find out about the story, and I really like that. L writes about 
Ramya's dyspraxia in a way that I think is probably very true to how a lot of people feel. Ramya is also not always entirely likable and that I think is quite rare in a middle grade to have a character who does have a lot of frustrations, makes some mistakes, does own them by the end. It's a really interesting character development, really interesting fantasy. I didn't realise this was a duology, <laughs> uh, at least a duology. So the second one came out literally this month. So I have picked it up already and I may get to it in March. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm really interested to see where the story goes. I, I did think it was a standalone and ultimately would have preferred to just read a standalone but I kind of got through like two thirds of the book and I was like we're not going to be done there's so much ground to cover here so yeah I gave this book four stars I think that it is a you know I think it almost reads a little bit older that Ramya is like 10 or 11 and I don't think I could have read this when I was 10 or 11 but maybe I'm misremembering but I think it would be a very interesting story for people to read I think if you like fantasy stories if you are a child that likes anything like the book that shall not be named or anything like that you would enjoy this story i think it has similar elements but also a quite complicated protagonist and you know a real like family backstory and so i think that that is something that a lot of people would actually get on board with so i would really recommend picking this up uh because i think that more people should read it uh and i think that you know the author and the publishers are doing really good things for sort of underrepresented groups in literature and so I would really recommend it for that reason. So yeah, but definitely pick this up. So that is what I read in February plus spare. Uh, I had a great reading month. I had a great time. I, you know, I didn't read any five stars, sadly, but I read, you know, a lot of above average and good books, which is, you know, probably mostly what I can expect from my reading taste, because I just think I don't think I'll ever be someone that rates a load of things five stars, I'm just not that kind of person. So the fact that I have nothing below a three star is very good going. So I'm really excited for reading in March. It is Final Book Support Group. So if you haven't watched the video on my channel already with my March TBR, I would really recommend that you check that out because you can see what cabin I'm in and the books I'm planning to read, which are all continuing or finishing series. Uh, so if I stick to that, it's going to be a good month, I think. So I'm really excited to let you know at the end of March how my wrap up went. I'm also thinking of vlogging a lot of this month. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah, hopefully you will stick around to check out what happens with my reading in March. If you did enjoy this video, I would really appreciate a like. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you had subscribed. Comment down below what was the best book you read in February. I would love to know. I will have links in the description to my Goodreads, which is where I post my reviews as soon as I finish a book. So you can always see what I'm reading over there. I will also have a link to my planning YouTube channel if you want to check out my other hobby and my Instagram, which I share between my planning and book channel. Otherwise, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.